Well, hello there. And today I'm going to show you how to make a comfort food today. Meatballs and gravy. Very much like Swedish meatballs, but better than the ones that you'll get at places like, oh, that furniture store that likes to also sell food, and, well, many of the other pre-made meatballs. They're actually not hard to make. To make the meatballs, just need a bowl, one pound of ground beef, or if you live in like the UK, mince. You need, they say a teaspoon, but this is about a half of a teaspoon of salt. I don't need as much salt in things as some of the recipes like. A half of a teaspoon of garlic powder, half of a teaspoon of onion powder, quarter of a teaspoon of ground black pepper, one quarter cup of breadcrumbs, plain or seasoned, it doesn't really matter, and one egg. And they say to go ahead and beat it beforehand slightly, but to be honest with you, you're going to mix it in anyways. And just like with a meatloaf or any other uh, ground beef product when you're mixing in the stuff, just kind of get in there and use a hand or two. This is a small enough batch, you really don't necessarily need both hands. So, now that that's all mixed together, a second, let me go wash my hands. So now that we've made the meat, we'll go ahead and show what to do with it. Go ahead and turn the pan on and start it getting warm. Now, because I'm using cast iron and, well, to be honest with you, so should you, but if you don't, so be it. I'm not going to shame you. Use what you got. I've had to use the, the, you know, flimsy coated pans for years. And to be honest with you, I don't really like those. I found that my cast iron has lasted me forever. And it's easier to clean and it's actually more non-stick than most people think. So while it warms up though, we'll go ahead and add a little bit of olive oil. And I do mean just a little bit. I mean, we're just making sure that it has something to go into to start with. We're going to get quite a bit of grease out of these at first that's going to somewhat boil away. And if we have too much, we'll drain it off before we make the gravy part. But we do want some of it for gravy. Just take a small chunk of it. Make a chunk that's a little bit smaller than a golf ball. They will shrink a little bit. Normally I'd start dropping these in the pan, but the pan is not warm enough yet. It does take cast iron a few minutes to get warm. Yes, nieces and nephews, the chef does have to sit quite often these days. My knees are not doing as good and my lower back is not doing good either. So, but that's why most of my recipes are very easy. I don't want to have to stand up for them for too long. Now if this video is of use to you and you like it, or even if it's not of use to you but you still like it, please, there's a like button down there. Go click it. I can feel the warmth coming off the pan so it's now safe to start putting them in. 
And I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit because you don't want to get it so hot because fry, uh, cast iron, you can actually do frying at about midpoint of, of the scale on your uh, stove. I'd warm it up to just past medium, get it nice and warm, and then you can go ahead and uh, back it down. Right now I've got it on medium, but I did have it at three quarter to start with. And that's the thing about cast iron is it does retain the heat a lot more than your small coated pans do. Which is why you can actually use a lower temperature once you actually get it preheated. I mean, you don't have to put as much effort as I'm putting into to making the meatballs. You can just use a cookie scoop too. It's kind of my method usually, but today I actually felt like rolling them. Now these can be served over rice, noodles, mashed potatoes. My favorite is to go with noodles, pasta. Some people use fettuccine, which is what I do use. But I've seen others just use uh, egg noodles, uh, rotini. I'm sure if you're in a pinch you can even use elbow macaroni if you wanted to, but eh, I think I'd save that for the cheese. Now I'm also going to warn you that tonight I'm doing this actually ahead of time. Like I said, I'm kind of lazy because of not having a lot of energy in my back and my knees. So this is for serving either tomorrow or the day after. And all I gotta do is boil the pasta later if I want to when I go to serve it. Or I can even boil the pasta and put it away too. But I'm basically doing this in meal prep style. Cooking tonight, eating in a different time. This will, it's perfect for that because it does, well, does reheat. We'll store it in the refrigerator in a container with the gravy already on them. Now these uh, meatballs, you're going to probably cook uh, about four or five minutes per side if you want. Um, you can cook them a little less, especially if you're going to, you know, because once we make the gravy, we will be letting it simmer in the gravy for a little while. You do want to use, wash the bowl that you just use most likely because we will be using it again in a few minutes. The gravy gets made in the same pan, but we're going to pull the meatballs out. Turn the pan down just a little bit more. As you can see, they are kind of getting a little toasty on the bottom there. We don't want to burn them if we can avoid it. Now, if you have your pan hot enough, you actually don't necessarily need five minutes per side. Like I said, we don't want to burn them. On the other hand, also, you don't want them raw in the middle. Even if you are into steak tartare, Anymore, I'm not sure I want to risk some of the problems that come with eating that if people don't properly take care of the uh, meat. I mean, you can get all sorts of things nowadays that you couldn't necessarily even, or didn't even necessarily hear about 20 years ago. One thing I'm going to tell you about this, 
So there's no preservatives in this. I put in half the salt that the recipe calls for. So this is technically a lower sodium dish now. That may, and by making it ahead of time, it makes it more convenient than going and buying something out of the, the freezer that costs 10 or 12 bucks in the store. Because the meat, yeah, the meat's going to cost about five bucks because it's a pound. But if you have the normal onion powder, garlic powder, salt, and pepper in your cupboard, but only costs less than a buck most of the time, or about a buck anyway, so this is cheaper. Now, when we make the gravy, we'll need a half of a cup of, of half and half. A lot of people keep that in the house for their coffee and cereal. You can use milk if you want, but half and half does yield a better flavor. And it'll use two cups of beef broth and some butter and flour. Most people have butter and flour if they do any sort of baking and cooking. And the beef broth, if you really have to, you could probably substitute bouillon. So all in all, this could be pretty much considered a pantry dinner. Or pantry meal. And if you make it ahead of time, like I'm doing, this is more convenient now. So why go to the drive through or go get one of those, you know, frozen boxes out of the freezer section? And you can take about a half hour. Because if you know you're going to be busy later... Later in the week, you could do this. Some people like to do meal prep on, on a Sunday as part of the activity of things. I guess that's why they call it meal prep Sunday, right? Like I said, we don't want to get all of this out. We are going to want some of it. But we definitely don't need this much. And this also makes it healthier. So at this stage, we're going to go ahead and pull these out. Like I said, this is why you wanted to wash the bowl. Might as well just reuse it. I mean, yeah, you had to wash it once, but it makes sense to go ahead and reuse it still. Especially if you used a metal one like I do. I kind of want that one to be in just a couple more minutes on that one side. Okay, now youngins, we're going to make the gravy, and we're going to start off with making a roux. This is just a simple butter, flour, and broth roux, okay? Three-ish tablespoons of butter, and go ahead and just melt that in there. This is why you wanted a little bit of that beef fat left over because that's going to help add to the flavor. But anybody that's ever had to worry about the cholesterol knows you don't want a whole lot. Okay, even though we just, because we just put in a heck of a lot of butter. So we're going to go ahead and melt that out mostly. And you don't want it up on too high because you don't want the butter to go brown. Even though it's kind of going to go brown from the, the beef, you don't want it to go brown from being burnt. 
And to that, here in a second, I'm going to be adding three tablespoons of flour. Now when I do that and whisk this together, you're going to want to make sure, when you do it, make sure you cook it for about 30 seconds to a couple of minutes. The reason you want to do that is to make sure to cook the flour taste. You want to cook the, 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 the flour taste out. And it's going to thicken, yes. You're going to see kind of a paste. That's perfect for right now because now is the time to break up those lumps. Form a nice paste. And you'll smell that flour at this point, or at least you should. And many gravies actually use this technique, just so you know. You can turn the heat back up a little bit at this point. As a matter of fact, that'd be kind of a good thing. But this is another reason you want to be careful about the temperature you use on this because, well, if you burned everything to the bottom, you're now kicking all that burnt stuff into your, your gravy. No, I've turned it back up to medium by now. Just kind of add a little bit of your broth at a time. And as you can see, the minute you start that, it changes its chemistry enough that it starts forming this nice little goopy paste. Don't worry, we're adding the rest of this. It's going to be two cups of broth you're going to add. If you added more, uh, more than three tablespoons of flour, you might need a little bit more broth. But add it a little bit at a time and just keep whisking. And again. Keep a potholder handy. Don't burn yourself. Just because uncle can do, the, do it doesn't mean everybody else can. So I'm doing it with one just to remind you guys, use one. Don't burn yourself. Kitchen safety. And for those of you that, you that can hear that in the background, that is Chester agreeing with me. Ladder, he's telling me I'm going to need to sit down again soon. Hopefully it's just the, the first one. So I really need to kind of stand up to do this. Give that a second while I go put this in the sink. Now see, it's got that nice gravy consistency. And go ahead and bring that up to a boil.
Okay, now that I've boiled it, or brought it to a boil, I'm gonna turn it down to a simmer. The reason for that is now we're gonna add these back. And I mean, while they sit, a little bit more of the juice is gonna come out. But I'll just kind of give these a rotate. Now, the meatballs are back in the gravy. Go ahead and cover them. Let them simmer 15 minutes. So, we'll come back in 15. Well, they've been simmering now for about 15 minutes. Let's go ahead and do the last little bit here. We're gonna go ahead and raise it back up a little bit, but we're not gonna completely bring it to a boil. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to warm it up a little bit. And then we are going to uh, add in our cream. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull these back out, but like I said, I'm going to be doing this into a container for uh, meal prep purposes, so now normally you wouldn't do this part, but I'm going to. Because what we're going to do is we're going to add in our half and half now. As you can see, it's kind of thickened. So we're gonna go ahead and add in our half and half. Give it a bit more of a stir. And also, you don't wanna scald your half and half, so that's another reason we're not boiling it. Turn that off now. See, so I'm wanting the gravy to actually cool down a little bit. See, so I'm not serving it right now. I would normally would say go ahead and let it sit for about five minutes uh, with the heat on and then serve it over new, uh, pasta, rice, mashed potatoes. Uh, whatever you choose to, to, to serve it over. But now I've turned it off, I'm gonna let it cool for a few minutes, and then I'm gonna go ahead and pour it into here. Okay, so it's, yeah, it's cooled down enough. And it cleans up that fast. So, thank you for, for watching. I hope this was something that you liked. If so, please make sure to click that uh, like. 
Don't forget to click the subscribe and join the tribe. And make sure also, if you click that subscribe button, that you also click the little button for the bell because that way you get notified when I upload. And I'm just making sure that they're all down in the gravy. Very good. Also, links in the description for the pretty downloadable recipe to put in your own book. Also, if you don't have a printer, you can still read the recipe. It's just right in there. It's text. You'll just have to write it down instead of printing it off. And also in the description, there is some links to my merch. Show a little support. Uh, it's the only way I'm making money. Because unfortunately being broken like I am, I don't have a, any other job. And if you don't mind, or don't care to, to if you get like some merch or buy something off of Amazon using my link. Which, by the way, if it's in my uh, blog down there. Or in the, the description. It's something I'd probably have in my own kitchen. Um, and in some cases it is something I have in my own kitchen. So by all means. Go through there next time you want to buy something. Or if you like something. That, or like to make the video and you don't have something you want to do that. Go for it. Or there's some uh, links in there for going ahead and donating through like PayPal and that other app that starts with the word cash. So thank you and bon appetit.